All right. Hello, Facebook land. We are live here with the one and only Deshaun Young. <laughs> Hello. Oh, so Thank excited. Thank you so much for having you. me, Sarah. Yes. It's so, so good to see you. Oh, we kind of caught too. up for like a few minutes before we got on, but we're going to keep yes. catching up as we as we go here. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, so you're back in New York. I am. I'm back in New York. I got back about three and a half weeks ago. Yeah. And he was on the international tour of the Lion King. Yeah. Well, this one. So there's actually an international tour and there's a UK slash Ireland tour. This was the UK slash Ireland. Tour. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, I just got back from Edinburgh, Scotland. And here I am in New York. And it's a little crazy right now, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that got cut short, right? You guys it were. Did. We were supposed to close Edinburgh April 20th. Okay. But because of COVID and all everything going on, all the theaters are kind of closed down everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah. So how was that going, um, being kind of overseas when everything was coming to a head and coming back to the United States? Did you have any issues? No, we didn't have any issues. Uh, they wanted to get me back here as soon as possible once things started to get a little bit more intense here. Um, coming in, we flew in and we had our plane boarded and they checked temperatures and stuff. So that was a little weird from the CDC, but, um, but no, coming back was no issue and it feels comfortable and nice, at least if you're going through something like this to be in a comfortable environment and surroundings that you feel comfortable in. So. Absolutely. It's so blessed to have roof over our heads and yes. you know, food in our bellies and all of the amazing people out there that are, you know, on the front lines for all of us. Absolutely. It's the least we can do is stay home, right? <laughs> exactly. Stay home people. Yeah. So for all of you who don't know, Deshaun and I met at Cal State Fullerton yes. many moons ago. We <laughs> <laughs> what? That was like three years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Early 2000s were like, just so, um, yeah. So we both were in the BFA program there yes. and we did a chorus line and I yes. had Mara Davi on last week. Oh, yay. Mara, yeah. I love her. Yeah. So I got to catch up with her. And you, and played, you played Maggie in a question. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At Fullerton. And then she went on yes. to the course. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's how we met. And then, um, if I remember right, you left Fullerton to do a show at Disney, correct? Yes. Uh, I left Fullerton. Well, I'd kind of decided that I wanted to move to New York, so I needed to save up some money. And so I got offered uh, Aladdin at the Hyperion Theater That's full time. Right. So I left to do that and save up some money uh, to move to New York. Yep. And then, so tell me about your journey from um, going from... Aladdin at Disney to becoming Simba and Lion King. <laughs> okay, well, okay, so uh, I'm doing Aladdin at the Hyperion and saved up some money. Uh, I decided to move to New York City with a friend, Rachel Solorio, and so we got it all packed up our bags and moved to the big city, knowing nobody. Um, and uh, through a course of events, it just kind of lucked out that I would be singing every day in the apartment, and one day I was coming home and this lady stopped me and she's like, are you the voice that I hear uh, singing every day? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm so, I thought I was gonna get yelled at for being too loud. Um, <laughs> and she ended up being a manager um, and she had nobody of my type and she really was interested in having me come down and like sing for other people in the office. So that kind of happened the next day. And uh, oh my she, gosh. it's crazy, it's, it's like a movement. So she's like, let's just do a trial. Like, we'll see what happens and stuff. But like, I'd like to send you out on a couple things. And I said, okay. Um, and one of the first things she sent me out on was uh, hairspray. And, um, and so I ended up booking hairspray. And so, so then we became a partnership and I started working with her. And, uh, and yeah, after hairspray, my first big audition was uh, Lion King, Simba and the Lion King. And it happened and I got to do it. And, See, yeah. all of you out there that are living in New York <laughs> as actors trying to sing make loud. it. Sing loud. Sing <laughs> loud in your apartment. You, you don't never know, know who who's listening. You. Exactly. You never know. <laughs> that is incredible. What a story. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. So I remember, um, I can't remember what show we were auditioning for or if it was juries or something, but I know you used to sing. At, at Fullerton, you used to sing Endless Night, right? Endless yes. Night. Yes. all the time and i was like oh my gosh deshaun you would be such an amazing simba <laughs> and then it you... was much harder to sing then i was a little <laughs> nervous but now yeah now it's great yeah <laughs> but and then 
then all and then you know you became Simba and yeah. then um when I was very pregnant with actually it wasn't that I think I was like four months long maybe actually with Taylor I was pregnant um we had a big girls trip and we went out and I got to see Deshaun yeah, as Simba so on Broadway mm -hmm. and when you sang that song I was just a mess oh <laughs> like, yes. my god he's doing it mm -hmm. That was I love great. it. It feels it feels so great. And it's it's such a great show. The music and everything, like <sighs> still all these years later, I sing the song and I'm a mess. So yeah, it's, it it's is, beautiful. It is still one of my favorite shows I've ever yeah. seen. It's so beautiful. The music is gorgeous. So and you have played the role for how many years now? <laughs> oh gosh. Uh well, my first time playing it was in 2007, uh, when I was 23. And um yeah, and so I years. yeah, off and on for yeah. eighteen years. I did it consistently. Uh, I started on the American tour for a little under a year, and then went to Broadway for about three and a half years, and then to the West End, and then to Vegas, and then I took a break and went into some other shows. My, but then my kept coming back. Saw you in Vegas. Oh yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love yeah. Vegas. Who doesn't love Vegas? <laughs> I didn't think I'd like it, like living there. No offense to anyone that lives Yeah, there, how but, long were you there? Uh, six months. Okay. But it's a beautiful city. It's it's gorgeous. And I didn't. I just didn't know anything of Vegas except the Strip. Sure. So getting to live there and experience it, it was such a different a different understanding of the city. So. Yeah, and seeing other things besides the Strip too. Yeah, which is fine out. if that's what you're going for. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So uh, how do you, now of course it's Simba in Lion King and the music is amazing and the role is just incredible. How do you keep it fresh after doing it? How do you keep it, you know, new and, and fresh and not stagnant um, playing yeah. the role that, that much? Well, you know, I think the fact that I've gotten to change companies so many times helps me. Um, each company is so different and that seems so... Yeah. Strange to say, because you're you're doing the same show and it, everything is the same around you. But I can't tell you how much like it changes things just to have a different Nala in front of you or something like that. But um, I don't know. I try to. I think especially now in my older age, I it the story the storyline resonates with me so much more. And mm -hmm. so I just try to stay true to what I'm saying and just think about what I'm saying. And it's so hard to deliver that material without letting it affect you because it's just so strong and it's just so heart wrenching and there's so many emotions that come with it. So I just feel like you can't say those lines and be present in the moment without it affecting you in some sort of way. So they kind of make my job easier to be honest. Other shows would be a little harder for me, but Lion King is just so well written and so beautifully done that if you just honestly say the text, you'll end up crying on stage. So <laughs> yeah, I can definitely, <laughs> let's see. I could definitely agree with that and, and see that and see how that would be a show that you could just keep doing over and over and over. And I'm sure as, as actors, we all have those roles that we've played where we know we could just do it over and over and exactly. never get tired yeah. of it. And, Absolutely. And it's emotionally draining, draining sometimes. <laughs> What's that? What did you say? <laughs> it's emotionally draining sometimes. I feel like it's a therapy session, but, but it's, yeah. it's beautiful and it's fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just was saying, what a dream to get. You know, Absolutely. Opportunity. I feel very that. blessed to have found the show. And I, when I first did it, I had no clue that it would be this reoccurring thing I got to do. It's a, the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> so thank you, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Disney, for, <laughs> for all that you do. <laughs> um, but Lion King obviously is not the only thing that um, that you have been up to these past you know, a few years since uh, since we were in school together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, so y your resume is quite lengthy of all the different things. You've got Motown, Beautiful, Carol King Musical, Hunchback, which that was actually the first musical we did at the Spotlight Theater. Yes. Was Hunchback. What another beautiful Disney musical. To oh, be so part gorgeous. Of. It's one of that. Hunchback is probably my favorite show that I've done to this day. Really? Uh, yes. isn't, isn't it just the music again? It's insane. Music. It's gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. So tell me a little bit about how you got involved with Hunchback. Yeah. So uh, I was on tour with Sister Act at the time. And the music director that was going to do Hunchback was our music director for Sister Act. And so he had kind of approached me about uh, being in the readings 
in New York uh, originally. And so that's kind of how I got associated with it. And so I came to New York and I did the readings with them, all the original readings for it. And then they decided to open uh, at La Jolla Playhouse. Um, and when that was happening, I couldn't audition for it because I was doing Motown on Broadway at the time. But then they did a move to Paper Mill Playhouse and Motown had just closed. And so they reached out to me and I came in and did an audition and then I got to be a part of that one. So it felt good to finally do it. And yeah, the brilliance on stage of the other actors. It, I mean, Gosh. just amazing, amazing work. Yeah. So when we were um, trying to figure out, we acquired this theater, the spotlight, which I don't even think I've talked to you since um, no. this <laughs> happened. Um, and we were just, you know, kind of wondering, oh gosh, okay, what show do we do first? So what is going to be our first in the, the theater is inside of this huge, beautiful castle looking cathedral. It's a oh, nice. Scottish right cathedral building. And we were just kind of looking around and we stumbled upon the La Jolla performance on YouTube. Yes. And we watched the whole thing and we're like, this is it. <laughs> yes. But an incredible, I, we're like, we don't know how we're going to do this, but like, <laughs> we're going to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would love to see that. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, we just, we, the, the, um, the theater came with all of these beautifully hand painted drops that were original. The Masons had, um, had put in there. And um, one of them is a cathedral and the like stain back is a uh, scrim. So you can shine a light through the back of it. And it looks like that glass window and everything. We're just like, this is all just coming together too perfectly. <laughs> yes. you know? Yeah. That's but amazing. That, how, how long have you guys been open? Oh, uh, we are we are in our second season Fantastic. right now, um, our second full season. But we opened May of 2018, so okay. we're almost we're approaching our two year anniversary. Congratulations! Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, um, let's see, let's see if we have any. Oh, I have some comments here. Let's see. Uh -oh. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, what roles do, oh, awesome, 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 <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, let's see, some excuse, uh, Cassandra Gaona, I'm going to say uh, that Cassandra. wrong, Gaona, Gaona, I'm sorry, Cassandra, I'm totally butchering your last name, um, I shared this with my high school drama students, I hope they jump on, you're saying things they really need to hear, um, awesome, yeah, Taylor Bly, what roles do you still have on your performer's bucket list? Oh, gosh. Um, I think I would love someday, if it's if a revival comes around when I'm old enough to play it, I would love someday to do Cole House and Ragtime. I mm. think that's a, that is one of the first musicals that I saw that when it ended, I ran home and told my mom, that's what I'm doing as a career. Brian Stokes uh. Mitchell, like changed my life and changed my idea of like what I even wanted to do. And I just saw that performance and I was like, that is what I'm going to do. Yeah. So yeah. I'd say, yeah, I'd say Cole House and Ragtime. Um, I'd probably love to do Hamilton as well too. Maybe oh, like an Aaron Burr yes. or something. Yeah. I could see you doing both of those. I guess you yeah. do. You're so darn talented. I, You're I, very sweet. And so are you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Brian Vestal. Another hi Brian. <laughs> love. Yes. Um, he says hi to Sean. So proud hi. of all your success. Thank and you. And Taylor Green. Oh my God, yes, ragtime is awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about Motown. How amazing oh. that experience must have been. I honestly like, and this is no disrespect. Like, this isn't saying anything about the other cast that I've worked with. But I honestly have never done a show where you could, no matter anyone in that theater, what role they played, what ensemble member they were, you could pass a microphone to them and what they did would blow your mind. It was just one of the most unbelievable casts that I've ever worked with, especially vocally. And I was just, I remember one of my first days in the dressing room and I was just looking around and I was like, I'm in this show with all these freaking vocal beasts. <laughs> like it blew my mind to be in a room with all these people because it just made me feel so insecure. I was like, oh gosh, they made a mistake. Like this isn't, this isn't what I'm doing. Uh, no, <laughs> like, <it's not. laughs> but um, so it was it was a great experience, and it was just so, yeah, just so humbling to be surrounded by so many amazing, amazing 
vocalists in that show. Uh, I mean, you never get tired of that music. Performing it every day and listening to the audience reaction as soon as they heard the music and what they recognized was insane. So yeah, yeah I, I love that show and I was really kind of bummed when it closed, but. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Let's see here. All right. Um, a beautiful, what about beautiful, the Carol King musical. Yes. You we're in that as well. I mean, amazing, you're amazing, you're... amazing show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I actually went to see Beautiful uh, with a friend who really wanted to see the show. And I did not particularly want to see the show in the beginning. I didn't know much about it. I knew it was a jukebox musical. Um, it just didn't seem high up on the shows that I really wanted to see. But she really wanted to see it. So I went to see the show with her. And uh, it blew my mind. The show ended and I just sat there and I was like, what? This, <laughs> this show is amazing. It's so well constructed. It takes you on a journey. It's just such a beautifully, no pun intended, beautifully done show. <laughs> and so, so, um, so I remember the show finishing and they were in previews and, uh, and the choreographer of the show I had worked with in another show and he happened to be in the booth sitting there and he saw me. So we started talking and everything. And I was like, dude, I'm gonna do this show, and um, and they call. He's like, you will do the show, and so they called me in a little bit later, and uh, yeah, and so there was a first national tour about to open, and I started the first national tour. I did that for six months, and then they moved me to the Broadway company, and so then I did that for another six months, and then uh, awesome. Lion King called me back, so I went back to Lion King, and then I finished that contract, and then Beautiful asked me when I come back to the Broadway company, so then I came back to Beautiful, and yeah, and so. Yeah. It's been fun. I've got to play two different uh, tracks in Beautiful, so that was nice. And it's a show that, I mean, if you haven't seen it, if it's anywhere near you, like, go see it. It's a it's a really, really well done show. And um, yeah, I got to work with one of the powerhouses, that I've, most powerhouse performer that I've ever worked with, Miss Abby Mueller. She's insane. Um, oh and she's gosh. in the new six that's coming out. So yeah. Oh that's my right. goodness, I want to see that so yeah. bad. I saw it in London. It's so good. I, the, all I've heard is amazing things so about good. it. So much so good. I was actually listening to the soundtrack right before we started this. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to Lion King. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't listened to that in a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you have been pretty cons consistently working since yes. leaving California. It's but been um, an, an, an amazing ride. Like, um, yeah. I, it's, it's so unexpected. I'm so grateful for it. Uh, as unfortunate as this time is, it's kind of been nice to have a break um, and yeah. not have to worry about my voice or singing eight shows a week because sure. I literally have been doing it since 2005 um, and pretty consistently with maybe a few months off be between one gig, but otherwise consistently eight shows a week. So it's been, it's wow. been really nice to just have a break and not think about singing and just kind of relax and just enjoy and take the time. But I'm excited to get back to performing as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? As a performer, you're like, oh, I need a break. I need a break so bad. And then, yeah. like, you know, maybe a week or two into it, you're like, okay, I need to get back on the stage. And I need to get I'm back. going crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So what, um, what would we were asking everybody on our Q and A's, you know, what is your biggest piece of advice for people out there that are looking to pursue this as a career to continue to get this work and, um, just kind of what what work ethic, uh, um, you know, advice you have for, for yeah, everybody out there. I mean, I guess I would say the biggest thing, again, I don't mean any disrespect to anyone that doesn't agree with this, but it's so interesting to me to see people in this business that don't really know the business and they don't know the craft. They just happen to be talented and kind of fell into it. I truly come from a school of thinking like you should know your craft as much as possible and you should just immerse yourself in it and be as well-rounded as you can. Like if you're a singer dancer, then I don't know, take some improv classes, do something that makes you feel uncomfortable and shake up your game because there are so many freaking talented people out there all around. And if you come to New York, there are so many talented people here auditioning and it's gonna be, what is that one little thing that kind of sets you apart? Because many people are gonna be able to sing as good as you. Many people are gonna be able to act as good as you. So it's gonna be, what is that thing that can set you apart? And it, that thing can even just be being a good, pleasant person and, and having a good work ethic, work ethic and a nice person to work with, that reputation will follow you. And I can't tell you like how many times my agents have called me and they're like, hey, uh, this company wants to 
moved you to the Broadway company. Oh yeah, and they were just talking about like how you're just such a joy to work with in your work ethic and things like that. It's not always that you're the best singer. There are better singers out there than me. There are better actors out there than me. But sometimes it's just like, who are gonna be good, solid people to work with and you're gonna have a good time and they're gonna show up and do their job and it's gonna be no drama and things like that. But yeah, so I would say, just know your craft, just study, 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 learn to play an instrument. Everyone wants you to play an instrument now. So <laughs> learn to play an instrument and yeah. learn to do as much as you can outside of the box of what you normally do. It'll only make you a better performer and well-rounded and more castable. So that is amazing advice. That's, I hope everybody that was listening really <laughs> took that because that is, that is great, great advice. And it's so funny because every single person that we have asked this question to on here has mentioned basically, don't be a jerk, you know, yes. be a oh, good, yes. <laughs> nice person to work with. You know that your reputation, it may take a second, but your reputation catches up with you. And yeah. I can't tell you how many casting, well, not necessarily casting directors, but how many music directors or associate directors of shows that I was working in have come to me and be like, oh, you worked with this person. Um, how are they to work with? Just yeah. as a side note, because they're in final callbacks for your show. And they're like, oh, just, just a quick run. How are they to work with? Are they? And that's a lot of pressure sometimes to be put on. But if you are not a good person and not fun to work with, someone is inevitably gonna to say to that choreographer, they're not fun to work with. They're kind of a jerk. And and if it comes to a jerk and someone else who's not a jerk to cast, that's what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? So yeah. you just don't want to yeah. put yourself in those situations. Just just be nice. Just <laughs> come to work and then have fun and do your job. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think that really rings true for anybody in any profession in any <clears throat> community theater, theater, all the way up to that, to being, I mean, any profession at all, but Absolutely. being a good person, you know, and hopefully I really do have a lot of hope that we all will are taking this time to reset and um, grow and, yes. um, yeah, <laughs> Brian Vestal says <laughs> Svetlana. Be professional, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's Set our yes. Oh, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> Memories. She, yes, she's a fantastic, man. She whipped us into shape. That's oh, sure. yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, someone was supposed to see Beautiful on the 20th. Oh, dang. I'm so there. sorry. I hope you get your tickets rescheduled for another time. Yeah, yeah, and I think every all the theaters have been pretty good about that. Yeah. We were supposed to see Waitress um, on the oh. tour, and they've already rescheduled for next year. And great, great, yeah. great. What is next for you once um, so, um, opens back up? I don't know that I'm supposed to say the exact company yet, but um, but while I did close uh, the Lion King, the UK company, um, I am still continuing in a Simba role right. um, in another company. Um, the date has just gotten pushed back. So I was supposed to start with them at the beginning of May and now we're thinking more towards like October. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do until then, but I'll just be in New York. Relax. Yes. Taking right? classes when that happens <laughs> or I need to start doing more things online. I keep forgetting that there's all these resources available online to yeah. do things. People are teaching classes online. They're doing dance oh classes gosh. online. And like, I don't know. I just, at first it seemed like such a far-fetched thing to be doing in my apartment. But now I'm like, you know what? Why am I not taking these classes? So, so yes, I think I'll start taking you. some classes online and yeah, just kind of relaxing until it's time to get back in shape and be Simba ready for October. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is amazing how many uh, different dance companies and, and things like that that are offering even free classes online yes. right now. So it's, you know, take advantage of it while, exactly. uh, while it's while not going to last forever. So yes. Right. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. My list of questions for you oh. over here. <laughs> We're kind uh, of matching, by the way. What was that? We're kind of matching, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, look yes. at that. Oh, and then this was more like a one thing. It would be like. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hang. <laughs> <laughs> True twinsies. Yes. <laughs> oh gosh, I just remember like dance classes together oh, at Fulton, and man, we had so much fun. It was a fun time. It seems like it so fun. long ago. Like I mean, well, yeah. it was a long time ago. But I mean, but isn't that funny how like the early two thousands do not feel like they were that long ago? Even though exactly, 
they were but, like years ago but <laughs> well we still look good we still look good yeah that's right <laughs> Still looking good. Yeah. I know. I remember being so sad, but so excited for you. Leave, you oh, I know. It was so crazy. Just leave campus. the program. I knew. Sorry, I know. Just, oh, there we go. I know. Stop. But you know what? You had to do what you had to do to get where you are today. And you know that? Oh, was I cutting out? Yeah. That's faulty. No worries. <laughs> can you hear oh, me now? Yeah, I can. Okay. I think there's a, um, yeah, I think there's a big delay. I got the gist of what you were saying. It, um, it was sad to leave the program for those of you guys who don't know. So Cal state, uh, they have a musical theater program and you audition to get into it. And then they pick a small number of people out of all those people that audition and you start like really intensely training over the next few years. Um, and so you kind of get really close to that group of people that you are training with because you're doing all these classes and stuff together and you kind of all are in the same boat. And then at the end of every year, you have to do another jury to even stay in the program, which is intense Ugh. and crazy stressful. So you're all stressed together. And so, yeah, what do we have? Do we have four or five girls? Oh gosh. And like four boys? There were 12 of us, right? Yeah, there were like, yeah. Oh man. I can't even remember. This is a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely been amazing to watch your journey. You know, oh, and all you. of our classmates. I feel like all of their journeys have been just so cool to watch. And everyone's been very successful in what they've wanted to do. So it's been it's been great. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Brent Tubb. I know that guy. <laughs> says of all the theaters you've performed in around the world. What is your favorite Ooh. theater that you've performed in? Ooh, my favorite theater I've performed in. So I would have to say it would probably no, not probably. It would be the Mandalay Bay in Vegas. Oh I've, my gosh, really? I never performed. Well, number one, the stage is huge. So you walk on the stage and you feel like a rock star. So the Vegas Company of Lion King, they had to actually add more cast to it to fill up the stage because it was such a big stage. So if wow. you saw that production, you actually saw more performers than the Broadway company. And, um, huh. and I never worked with a sound system that was meant for concert singers. And I remember uh, doing my put in into the show and sound checking and Endless Night is starting and they're doing all this music and the ensemble singing. And I took a breath to calm myself and I heard the breath echo through the theater. I'd go, <gasps> and it went, <gasps> And I was like, that's crazy. I've, ne I've never experienced something like that because theater mics aren't made to do that. It's That's like a Celine Dion concert <laughs> type right? of feeling. But wow. I remember breathing in and hearing it echo through and it gave me chills. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is nuts. So I think I would have to say there because it was just such a different experience for me. And I felt like a rock star for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Um, and oh, uh, Brian Vessel wants to know because yes, you are super buff. You all can't tell in his whole sweater right now, but under that sweater, Deshaun is a buff man. Well, I haven't worked Brian on it like a month and a half now, but <laughs> <laughs> Brian Vessel wants to know if you have any workout tips for that beef. Oh my gosh, Brian, <laughs> Brian has a great body. Um, I, yeah, Brian, <laughs> I eat a lot. Um, as you know, those who knew me in college, I am naturally <laughs> very skinny. Um, so for me, some people like they have to lose weight before they tone up and stuff. For me, I have to, I work with an online trainer, Jake Burton, and um, and he forces me to eat so much food. So I'm constantly eating chicken breast and rice and broccoli and sweet potatoes, and it's annoying, but consistency gets the results. And so if I when I'm consistent in my head about what I eat and working out consistently, which is pretty much every time they send me back to Lion King, I freak out because I'm going to be shirtless and I go back to him <laughs> and I start doing that. Um, so when I'm consistent with the diet and the training, the muscles start popping out. So, <laughs> you know. So protein, protein, probably a bit. Yes. All about that protein. <laughs> Let's see. We have another question for you here from Hi. Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Um, oh, this is a good one because I do remember when I came to see Lion King, I got to see you before the show started. You like showed us to our seats and you weren't even in makeup or costume <laughs> or anything yet. Yes. So he wants to know how many hours does it take to get into costume for Lion King? And it's such an incredible, a tremendous show. Thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Um, well, 
so it depends on the company you're on. Internationally, they have this thing where you actually do group warm ups before the show together. Um, so you have to be there much earlier. You do a vocal warm up all together as a cast with the music director or whoever's conducting that day. And then you do um, a dance warm up with either a dance captain or the dance supervisor before the show. So you're at the theater much earlier than you would be. American companies, we don't have that. Uh, they kind of ex just have you and expect you to warm up and do whatever your process you need on your own. So you get to the theater at a half hour before the show starts, um, which doesn't seem like a lot of time to most people. But when you do the show eight times a week, <laughs> it becomes very easy. You know your process to get ready for the show. Um, and a lot of people start their warm ups and what you do before you get to the theater. So I would say, like, while I'm not like doing a vocal warm up before the show, my what I'm doing throughout the entire day is getting ready for the show. So everything that I do that day is affected by that show, which is also why it's fun to have a break. So when you're doing the show, what I eat, I'm thinking about what I'm eating. So my acid reflux isn't crazy at the show. So I eat very plain when I'm doing Lion King because it's higher in my register, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I try to go to the gym. The gym like starts my warm up, warm up for the day. But then I would get to the theater at half hour. Um, I wouldn't even start stretching and I just kind of start doing a little bit of a vocalizing warm up. And then I would go to the makeup around in, as the show starts and can't wait to be king. And then after I get out of the makeup call, they're about to usually like either starting Stampede or halfway through Stampede. And that's when I would start doing like a really physical, physical warm up. And then I would let that continue right into Hakuna Matata and swing on stage and go get them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember too, um, when we, we came and saw you, you took us on a backstage tour and oh yes. my goodness, that was so cool. The just, sets, is, it's nuts. It's insane. It Can you tell people a little bit like what it's like backstage for that Back, show? Backstage is crazier than on stage. Like, so yeah. the, I mean, if you've seen the show, the sets and everything are just massive and enormous. And, and so most of the things are hung up off stage above us, but to get the changes in, you're taking a set off stage, you're bringing a set down on from the ceiling down, and then you're hooking that up and taking that up. And then you have 40 something actors running around and trying to get on stage and in their places as well. So it's crazy, crazy specific. You're blocking backstage when you're taught the show more like more so than any other show I've ever done. They're very specific about where you need to stand and what you need, where you need to be backstage, because otherwise you get taken out by an elephant flying by or something like that. Like, <laughs> so, so it's That's very, very specific. Elephant. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> All right, let's see. Well, I don't think I have any other questions. Oh, wait, okay, one more thing. Uh, uh -huh. I'm a huge Sex and the City fan. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> tell me about your involvement with Sex and the City, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that was random. It was so random. So um, I was doing Lion King at the time in New York, and um, I got a call from my agent. He's like, hey, uh, Telsey, Cassie wants you to come in for um, a possible singer in uh, Sex and the City 2. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Um, so we kind of came down and they paired a bunch of us together who they were thinking of possibly doing this. And um, we did some screen tests and then they sent that away to California. And then we didn't hear anything else for a minute. Um, and then I got a call that we, the people they put together, we were gonna be the singers in the movie and, and it was very exciting. And they said the music director was gonna call um, from LA to like, talk to you and like figure out your vocal type and everything. So all of a sudden I got a call from this guy and he's making me sing acapella on the phone so he can hear my voice. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and so I'm singing to him on the phone. And so then they sent us sheet music for three songs and put us, told us what parts we were gonna be singing. And in theater world, you like, you come in and you prepare, you have rehearsals. And so I kind of thought that's the way this was gonna be. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so the first day we met at the studio and I'm assuming we we're gonna rehearse and he literally passed out the sheet music and put us behind mics in the studio and said, okay, let's, let's do a go. And we're like, wait, what? And oh they just expected God. you to sight sing this material and be ready to just sing it for the world. And like, wow. it was a little, it was very, very scary. So I think I was very thankful of my days at Cal State Fullerton that prepared me to be able to sight <laughs> sing yeah. through. Thank so you, I, Mitch Hanlon. <laughs> exactly, thank you, Mitch. I didn't freak out as much as some of the people, but like some of the guys, I remember no names mentioned, but one of the guys being like, can you please sing this part to me really quick? Like, and because oh. everyone was freaking out and no one wanted to like get let go of, we didn't know what would happen if it just wasn't right. You know what I mean? But it yeah. ended up being great. And so we did our takes in the studio. Um, and then maybe a week or two later, we started shooting, um, which consisted of 
a lot of time sitting around, mm-hmm. um, which is crazy to me. It, it just, it blew my mind how much money a production like that has. And they can just, you know what I mean? You just sit around all this time. You go into overtime, you're still sitting around and it's, it's nothing to them. So, but it was great for us because we got to bond together and be together yeah. on for so long on this one scene that we were doing, but we were probably together close to a month. It was like three and a half weeks of just sitting together and wow. shooting. And we got to see Liza for many of those days. And she sang us a goodbye song when she left. And it was, it was a great experience. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Brian wants to know, what are some of your favorite shows in general over the past decade? Ooh, uh, oh gosh. Okay, so I love Beautiful. That really surprised me. I really love Jersey Boys. That was another one I didn't technically want to see when I saw it. Um, and it really, really impressed me. Um, I loved Hamilton, of course, too. Uh, what are some shows that really, really hit? Lady Day. I remember leaving the theater after Lady Day and just being like, what just happened to me? <laughs> like, <laughs> Audrey McDonald is nuts. She's a yeah. force of nature. If I, yes. I want to work with her someday. Um, but yes. Yes, like, oh she's, gosh. She's insane. I will be there. I'll yes. be there too. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it just blew my mind. I remember just watching that and just being like, what just happened? Like, so that was really great. I'm sure there's so many more. I just can't, I'm, my brain is not working on <laughs> What shows right now? Um, do, 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 do. Brains are, are just yeah. totally, you know. Fried. My brain's on quarantine, <laughs> Brian. So um. <laughs> Quarantine brain, Brian. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, I do have another question. Fun story and related question. My mm. mom got so into the show, talking about Lion King, mm. that by the end of it, she forgot there were visible people in the costumes. She I said, love how that. do those giraffes even move? So the giraffes are my favorite part. So circle of life is, I think that number's insane for anyone who has not seen the show. Because it is so gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And it's everything just coming together. Please, when you get a chance, especially if you can see Deshaun, please see it guys. It's come see it. (laughs) But that moment. So Rafiki does a call, the antelopes call with her and then the bass kicks in. And the lights start to chill. come up. Think about it. <laughs> and, me too. And the sun <laughs> starts to rise. And the draft takes its first steps on stage. And that's oh. the first time seeing like the animals oh come gosh. on stage. And it's just like you see the silhouette of this giraffe. And you actually don't see that as a person at first. Of course, you know it's a person. But they're on these huge stilts on the front of their arms and the back of their legs. Or that didn't make any sense. On their arms and on their legs. <laughs> and, and, I got it though. I'm with you. I'm with you know what I'm saying? And so they're on these huge stilts and they walk on and they're this long head and you just see the silhouette of them and it's breathtaking. And that's when the band kicks in and the ensembles walk. It's it's oh, gorgeous. It's it, it, it truly does. An take amazing you. moment. Yes. Yes. Fully, fully agree. Um, oh, she said so her her question, her is um the See, I can't, I have quarantine now. <laughs> quarantine brain. <laughs> Can you tell us a little about what is required differently in this show to other stilts and all? So like all the different mm. things and, you know, you guys have these amazing headdresses too, which I can imagine. Yeah. A no, bit. so Lion King, more, more so than any other show that I've done. Uh, I was just talking about uh, my most recent Nala, Jocelyn. We got to do it together in Korea too. So we have uh, very well bond together, but we were both talking about how intense of a show Lion King is more so than any other show that we've done. And I think most people in Lion King would say that. It's, um, I've never had a show that is so physically demanding and vocally demanding and acting demanding at the same time. It's just, it's just everything you do is just at full throttle. And so you have to be, more so than anything, you have to be physically aware in the show and physically on top of your fitness, whether that be stretching or Pilates or whatever, but you have to make sure that your body is strong enough to withstand these puppets, the demand of the puppets, eight shows a week. Um, So for different characters, that's gonna be different things. But like for me personally, I have to make sure that my body is strong enough so that I'm not using just my neck and everything the whole time, but my back can like take some of the control of what I'm doing so that I'm not out from just going like this in one head movement for 
two weeks, you know? So, yeah. so yeah, I would say, what was the original question? I got sidetracked. <laughs> it was just, yeah, what's required differently. Yeah, I, so, you totally answered it. Yeah, what's yeah. required differently of you in the show? It's, just, it's the <laughs> physical demandness. I don't think there's anyone in Lion King that isn't going above and beyond to take care of their body, whether it's going to physical therapy separate um, sessions or going to Pilates or doing yoga classes or going to the gym. Everyone in that show, or at least people in that show who have been in that show longer than six months, have figured out that the way to maintain and stay in that show is to be on top of your body. Yeah. Yeah, that w- that makes sense. Yeah. You guys probably have like a chiropractor on hand too. Maybe. Oh my gosh. We, every <laughs> company of the Lion King has a physical therapist that stays with that company. And yeah, when I tell you, those physical therapists need all the gifts in the world because they are so busy. I mean, there's just a sign up. And they they are working on people all day up until the show, during the show, and after the show. They wow. they are very very utilized. Um, and yeah, but it it is kind of what is needed in a show like that to keep the show running and maintained because it's just you're doing crazy dancing and one little thing and something hurts and it's yeah. Yeah, that's awesome that you guys have that yes. on hand because yeah. you need it. <laughs> Um, I have a question from somebody um, who was actually in our production of Hunchback. Hey. Um, and she says, this is Elizabeth Stemlar. She says, what was it like working in the studio recording session for Hunchback? Do you think Quasimodo's storyline is relatable to what we're all going through right now? Being in social distance, hashtag hauntingly beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It definitely is. Um, I would have never put that together <laughs> until you said that, but yes, it definitely yeah. is. And it is hauntingly beautiful. Um, working in the studio was so great because, so we had already done the production together. And um, uh, what was what was I doing? At the, oh, so I was on Beautiful at the time. And so we didn't know when the production finished that we were doing this studio recording. Uh, and so I was on tour with Beautiful and then, they kind of emailed everyone and it was kind of like fingers crossed everyone could get the time off from what they were doing to be able to come back to New York and be in the studio and do these recording session. Um, and it just worked out that everyone could. Um, awesome. I think Sierra was the hardest one because she was shooting a TV show in LA at the time. So they had to do dub her stuff separately in LA. Um, but, but yeah, everyone else got to come back together and be in the studio together in New York. And it was amazing. It was like a reunion and it was such a fun, cast to work with so it was such a great time to just get back together and be in the studio it was like a, a big party <laughs> honestly for us and we got to see our music director ba again and it was it was a joy to sing that music again so it was it was great yeah that's awesome uh, again another beautiful musical oh it's so gorgeous that score like Oh my god! Put that music on and just listen to it all day. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I I would do that show again in a heartbeat. Absolutely, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it's. I think it's well, Alan Menken's best score. It's just, it's insane. Mhm, mhm, yeah. So, where will you be? I know you can't tell us what company you're with. Can you tell us where you'll be performing? Well, it will be somewhere overseas again. Okay. Um, it all won't right. be the UK Ireland tour. But there are a lot of uh, overseas <laughs> companies. It could be any of them. There's a Paris company opening. There's a Madrid company. There's an international tour. There's there's a lot of things. <laughs> I'm trying not to get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble. No, but no, no. yeah, just feel. Um, and, and how can people kind of follow along with what you're doing? Do you ha- you have a website? Yeah, but uh, I use. So I'm a huge social media person. Um, so I use Instagram a lot for what okay. I'm doing and posting all that stuff. So if you follow me, my name, Deshaun Young on Instagram, um, that's all up to date. Yeah. Awesome. So go, go follow him. And then can people yeah. watch clips of you? Are there clips out there of you on YouTube? Yeah, 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 yeah. There definitely as are. Them done every, as, well, probably other things. Yes. I mean, I have more of the bootlegs. Contact me. But um, <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> DM him on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, no, there's some clips out there and stuff. Lion King's pretty... Um, pretty tight about making sure if any clips come out on YouTube, they get taken down pretty quickly. So, um, yeah. but there are, uh, when I was in the New York company, I got to do performances on The View and on the Today Show and things yeah, like so that. So promo videos, yeah, yeah. Please go check him out because he's insanely talented and just, oh, yeah, as so you he... can all see, such a nice person. 
person. And so uh, thank you so much for being thank on you here. So much. Today, it was great to talk to you. You too. I wish you all the best and I'll just keep watching thank your journey. You. Same to you and stay safe during this quarantine. Yes, you too, especially you. being in one of the the hotter spots. The so hot spots, yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, Deshaun. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, and if you guys can watch this replay, it'll be on YouTube and it'll be on our website. So Yay. share away. <laughs> Bye. Bye.